Hello and welcome to my Huga Crow. My name is Christina. I use she, her pronouns, and I am coming to you from Sacramento, California, uh, where I live with my daughter, Elliot, and my husband, Joel, and our cat, Nissa. Um, I have been <laughs> not uh, filming <laughs> recently because um, for anyone who's watched my videos before, you know I have a uh, baby. Um, Elliot is now six months old and she, um, well, she's in daycare, but um, I have gone back to work full time as of uh, the end of May and I have found it very challenging to find time um, to film a, a podcast um, when it is light out because <laughs> obviously she sleeps and um, you know takes naps and stuff but usually I'm um, at work and she's at daycare uh, or it's nighttime and it's dark <laughs> and I can't film so um, she's at daycare now I'm taking this opportunity to film in her room, which is um, the brightest room in the house. Uh, so here I am. Um, excited to share about my June and July knitting uh, that I have been doing. And I will let you know, it is not a lot. <laughs> I have definitely lost um, some knitting motivation over the summer. Um, Sacramento is really hot. It's 90s um, and often in the hundreds here. Uh, so woolly things aren't necessarily what you want to have um, on you. <laughs> uh, but I think it's more just it's been challenging to adjust to being back at work um, for a full day. Uh, Elliot has not been doing well at daycare. And so she has not been back at daycare or at daycare full time. Um, she is starting to go full time tomorrow. So that's exciting. Um, but she has been doing half days, but I've been working <laughs> full days. And so juggling that, um, has been, challenging I have to take some time off here and there and then if she goes down for a nap then I go back to work or my parents have been helping and Joel's also been taking some time off so um that has been a lot um and also just um my motivation has been elsewhere working on like projects in the backyard um I'm feeling very motivated to purge and organize <laughs> rather than knit. Uh, and also by, by the evenings, I'm just tired. And so I've been, when I do knit, I've been reaching for things that are really um, simple and easy. And as soon as a project reaches a point where there's like any challenge at all, I'm kind of just like, eh, not interested. <laughs> so all that to say, I don't have um, a ton of, stuff to share. Um, a lot of the whips are exactly the same as last time, but I do have one um, finished object for knitting. And I would say it's it's an almost finished project. And this is the uh, Knut body by Rilla Rund. And you can see I have some ends here um, that I'll explain in a second. But uh, the yarn is Haiku Kobasi, um, or Kobasi Haiku, I think. Uh, and yeah, it's just this cute little romper. It's perfect. It's a great summer yarn. Um, 
I actually haven't blocked this and I don't know that I will because it really just looks nice um, straight out the gate. It's like a cotton bamboo silk and I think there's like a little bit of elastane or something in it as well. Um, but yeah, it's like nice and stretchy and really uh, drapey. And yeah, I think it's super cute. It's still a little long for Elliot right now. So she will wear it um, probably a little bit later in the summer. Um, yeah, so I I was working on this in the last podcast and I, I finished it. And when I finished it, I the directions at the end, it's a good pattern, the directions at the end definitely confused me um, because they referenced like putting in buttonholes and button things um, even though in the pictures of the pattern there's definitely no buttons <laughs> so I was confused and I didn't want to put buttons in so I just um, I grafted these little i-cord uh, things to the like front so it was like just one piece um the i cord was was grafted on to the garment and then i looked at it and went oh like i'm gonna have to it, do, it doesn't button at the bottom so i was like oh gosh I, this is gonna have to like this neck opening here I can't really show it anymore but the neck opening would have had to slip fully up over her diaper and it did but it was a struggle and also this is still like big for her so she's gonna presumably get like thicker I guess in the in the middle or like her diaper well it'll just be bigger and so I figured that wouldn't work <laughs> uh, and also I'll I'll be way less likely to put it on her if it is hard to do so I cut the place where I had grafted the i-cord and I took the i-cord back a little bit and then I knit the three stitches together and I used a little crochet hook to make a button loop. Um, it's not super pretty. Uh, I don't know. I don't love it, but it is definitely going to work better. And I still haven't finished putting, so I'm just going to put two buttons on here. And then the little I-cord will loop over the button. Um, I have these ends that I like kind of picked out from when I cut the grafted part off and I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so I'm gonna just make sure I catch them um, when I sew on the button uh, and then I'll just clip them short cause I don't really have enough tail to like weave them back in. But anyways, um, I do recommend the pattern but I will say that the end is confusing. I think it might just be a, a translation thing or yeah I don't know but yeah the, the fact that the pattern didn't match the pictures was odd <laughs> but yes this is my one finished object <laughs> in the last two months um I'm excited for Elliot to get to wear that and then I do actually have a lot of um other finished objects that are sewing um they're sewing but they're knitting related so I, i'll share them um i went down a project bag rabbit hole <laughs> and it all started when um the maker knitting nelly her name is actually morgan but um she is knitting nelly on instagram and she put out a line of project bags for the summer do you call it a line if it's like uh, just like one single maker I feel like that's like for bigger 
<laughs> like designers or something. But anyways, she had this fabric that was all um, camping themed. And I am a huge Wes Anderson fan. And um, I love, I would say Moonrise Kingdom isn't my favorite Wes Anderson film. I think um, Royal Tenenbaums is. But I, Moonrise Kingdom is my favorite Wes Anderson aesthetic. <laughs> and so I could not resist this like camping, like vintage camping style fabric um, that Morgan was using for her summer project bags. And um, there was one, it was like a sweater sweater quantity project bag that I really, 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 really wanted. Um, and I just did not click fast enough <laughs> and I missed it and I'm pretty sad about it, but, um, I was able to get this one instead in that same kind of shop update. Um, and I'm happy because it still has those like vintage camping, fabrics and this is a notions pouch so anyways this was an acquisition in the last two months but I was so sad that I missed um this sweater project bag I'll put up a picture so you can see it um I was so sad I missed it that I just started thinking like I love the the fabric but more so I loved the quilt block um that she uh, created the bag using and I've been like standing her for a while <laughs> and just like absolutely loving her project bags um, and I'm also very quilt curious I learned to sew when I was a um, child and I have a sewing machine and I was just like this is this is how I get into quilting in like extremely limited context where I'm making one or two quilt blocks for uh, like a bag and not an entire quilt <laughs> because I just can't deal with that right now. So I was good and I decided that I would like kind of prove to myself that I would sew a project bag before I went and spent a lot of money on like fabric and supplies <laughs> because I always do that I just like go out and buy the stuff and then I don't follow through on the project so this time I was like okay before I buy anything I'm going to essentially prove to myself that I will sew a project bag and I did that um this fabric is something that I picked up at a estate sale that um, I thought it was just really cool. So I just had this in my stash. Uh, and I sewed this project bag based on the um, Fringe Supply Co. field bag. Is it Fringe? Anyways, the field bag, um, they, after they went out of business and stopped producing their bags, um, they published the pattern. I didn't buy the pattern because the whole point was not buying anything. Um, but they put out a YouTube video where they talk about how all the different steps of sewing the pattern. Um, so I'll link that here. And so I just kind of like winged it, wing, wung it wanged it I don't know um on like the sizing of the whole all of the pieces of fabric and I definitely got it very wrong so um my recommendation is that you buy the pattern um, and my other recommendation is that you you the bag is designed to be made out of waxed canvas and this is not waxed canvas. <laughs> it's kind of like a heavier fabric, um, but it is not, I'll like take this yarn out, but it is just, I mean, it's flimsy. 
um, and not, it's not right. But I did, I sewed it. I did that. And it's kind of cool. Um, if you're familiar with the field bag, you know, it has these like pockets inside. Um, and they're sewn right through the bag. So you like see the stitching on the outside of the bag. Um, but yeah, I was like pretty happy with this. Uh, given that I spent zero money, I <laughs> just used like some kitchen twine that I had to do the drawstring. <laughs> um, and so I thought, okay, uh, I'm ready to try to like buy some stuff and try uh, more of like a knitting Nelly style bag. Um, <clears throat> look, I feel like the cool things about the knitting, the cool thing about the knitting Nelly bag, this is one that I have. This is like a sock, sock size one. Um, her fabric choice is just 100. Like, how great is that? And the flannel on the back and like even the bottom is cute. I don't know. Um, but the, I think like what really sets these bags apart from other project bags is the quilt block, the fabric choice, but also <laughs> it has like quilt batting inside between the outer part of the bag and the liner. And so when you get it, it's just like really like squishy and soft um, and really cool. So before I spent a bunch of um, money on fabric that would be reminiscent of a knitting Nelly bag or a knitting Nelly bag, I um, decided I would try quilting with stash fabric that I had and I would just buy like the batting for the inside and the drawstring um, and stuff to kind of replicate the knitting Nelly style. So I made the this like flying geese, I think is what this block is called. I made some flying geese out of stash fabric that I had. And then obviously the rest of the bag is also that stash fabric. Um, this is just stuff that I have from when I was a kid and then also stuff I picked up at a thrift store. Uh, and I just, you know, kind of replicated the style. Uh, I, I looked at the bag that I did have to try to figure out how she did the liner and the um, drawstring and everything like that. And I also added this little handle on it, which I do, I really love that handle addition. Um, I do carry it around with the handle a lot. So that was a good, good call. Um, but yeah, so I made this <laughs> and I'm actually really, really happy with this one. I did mess up the quilt blocks and I have no idea what I did, but there's like a little raw edge on these two left ones. And I don't know why, but um, yeah, it's got the batting inside and it's just super cool. Um, but the fabric is like, I, it's fine, but it's not, it's not knitting Nelly level. So I, after I leveled up on this bag, I decided that I could spend money on fabric and of course, buying the fabric for the bag that I made um, was almost as expensive as if you buy a Knitting Nelly bag. So just buy a Knitting Nelly bag in, unless you like really want to quilt, <laughs> unless you're trying to like learn quilting or sewing. But um, this <laughs> is the bag that I made. Uh, with the fancy fabric that I got from um, Hawthorne's Supply Company, which I believe is where, I think I think Morgan buys her fabric from, um, from there sometimes and maybe some other places, but I just like, I, I deep dove on her Instagram and found um, like where she gets stuff. 
my obsession is very, very real. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this was the fabric that I decided to go with. I think the kind of these ones here are, um, it's like a summer fruit line. And anyways, I did the quilt block uh, like uh, the bag that I coveted and did not click fast enough on <laughs> um, for the shop update that she did. Um, I forget what this quilt block is called. Star, some kind of star. Maybe I'll put it on the screen if I can figure it out. Um, but yeah, there was, it was really cool to learn how to um, make the quilt block. It took me a really long time to actually like do the whole bag because I would do like one step and then wait a couple weeks um, just because things got busy. Um, but anyways, I decided to kind of do like a, uh, like a mix of the like knitting Nelly style of bag construction and the fringe supply co fringe the field bag um construction so what I ended up doing was um obviously the quilt blocks are very kind of knitting Nelly style but uh what I did for the rest of the bag construction was that I I did a I believe it's called a French seam or enclosed seam for the uh, bag edges which is what they what is done in the field the field bag and I did the like pocket the base um the bag base and pockets uh that go oh I didn't realize that like essentially this bag is completely reversible if I wanted to have pockets on the outside but that would be weird because then you have a quilt block on the inside of your bag um I am so scatterbrained today uh, anyways so it's got um these pockets on the inside and uh just like the the field supply um the field oh my gosh I'm gonna get the name right one of these times the field bag I sewed right through everything um for the like pockets and the pocket divisions so I, I thought it would be cool kind of like like actual quilting where you are, you know, top stitching over everything. Um, it didn't quite turn out as nice as I wanted to. I think one of the issues is that when you're quilting a quilt, you have the nice like quilty side up. <laughs> so you can like follow lines and stuff in the quilt blocks. Whereas if you're making a bag with a pocket you have to have the pocket side facing up and so I like the first time I sewed the pocket in it was like looked crooked and super weird it, probably also because I didn't use a pattern and so measurements were fine but a little off um, and so it just like looked really bad so I actually ripped out <laughs> um some of the like over stitching here and did it again but I like the result um the bag is way bigger than I intended it to be it probably could fit two sweaters I just wanted like a sweater bag but again I just kind of I don't know I didn't know what to expect and so I just kind of started with certain sizes of the squares and then it just like kept getting bigger from there um, and then the last thing I did is I put a little um I put a handle on this too because I really liked the handle on the other one but anyways um 
quite pleased with my trio of project bags. I think that this one might make its way to a Goodwill at some point in the future. Um, it's not, it's not my absolute favorite, but it has its charm. I have a lot more of this fabric, so if I want to do a project bag in this fabric, I can. I feel like I can do better. Okay, that was like a long thing about sewing in the middle of a knitting podcast. Um, so I'll go back to <laughs> knitting now. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to share all those um, finished objects. For my works in progress, I do have one uh, new work in progress from my last podcast update, uh, and that is the Pinwheel Baby Romper by Anur Berkenbaeva, um, who is a designer uh, that I've seen on Pearl Soho. Um, yeah, so this romper is super cute. I'm, I'm hoping to have it done, so obviously, so Elliot can wear it in the summer. Uh, but it has these, like, two little hexagons? Pentagons? Pentagons have five sides, I think. Um... Yeah, five five sided. That feels right. I haven't taken geometry since seventh, eighth grade, so <laughs> sorry. Um but yeah, so they it's like these two little things, one goes on the front and one goes on the back. And then you like <clears throat> knit essentially a pair of like bloomery style of short bits that come down um, and then I cord uh, for the like edging of the armpits and then it has two little ties um, and I am knitting this in Zauberball cotton Jungus Gemüse which means young vegetables in German um, but yeah this is my first little pentagon <laughs> and it's super cute. I love it so far. Um, casting on the start of it was an absolute misery, and so now I am procrastinating casting on the second one because I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> but I think um, I might cast it on using Magic Loop, which is a, cro a crochet technique, but you can do it with knitting. Um, and I have done that for some like stuffed animal knits that I have made. And so I think that that's going to be a better way um, to make it less absolutely miserable to start <laughs> the project. Once you get going, it's totally fine. It's just that first cast on, like a small circular cast on on double pointed needles with cotton yarn socks. So, um, yeah, I'm working on that. I think it'll be really cute with the, it's like a color fade um, throughout the ball. So hoping that'll be cute and a fun thing for Elliot to wear this summer along with the Knut body. Um, I am still working on my uh, ripple crop top by Jesse May Designs um, in Swan's Island Natural Colors Fingering Collection and the color is Vintage Lilac. <laughs> so I'm getting a lot of, I don't know if it's color pooling or striping or both, um, but there's a lot of kind of stripey striped stripes uh which at first I was like really not not liking uh but as I kept going I feel like they kind of like they they still look like stripes but I don't know it's more 
I just think it looks better the more fabric that I get um, finished. So yeah, this is really what I've been wanting to work on, just like a simple three by three rib in the round. Um, I learned Norwegian purling, which is a game changer uh, for my my ribbing <laughs> experience. Um, and yeah, I'm. I this is really what I want to work on. I work on it uh, during meetings at work, and also um, Joel and I started we had started watching Handmaid's Tale and then um when the pandemic hit we were like on season two and I was just like it's too stressful can't do it but I it's good and so I really want to finish it and so we've been watching that and that show is way too stressful for any sort of like intense knitting <laughs> so I've just been working on this um so I've been working on this a lot and I still am like maybe halfway to where you split for sleeves. <laughs> so still have a lot more to go. Um, so I'll be knitting on this one for quite some time. I think I'll be surprised if this is done before like next spring, but I'm just going to keep plugging away on it because it's a nice relaxing knit and the yarn is so nice. Um, but yeah. That's my update for the Ripple crop top. And uh, I'm also still working on my spoon drift uh, socks. I guess this is technically a half finished object because I have one sock. I just cast it off yesterday. Um, so yeah, this is it. It's not blocked. Um, and it's dark yarn, so it's really hard to see anything. Um, I have regrets with choosing a dark color yarn. The sample is knit in a light blue, and I think that that would have been better. Um, it's, it's really hard to see the lace work, um, in the dark yarn, and it, kind of when I have it on the the sock fits really well which this is my first the first sock that I've knit that I put it on and went like yeah that fits um so that's good but I feel like the lace panel since you can't really see the detail it kind of looks like lumpy so that's disappointing but the um I feel like this yarn which is knit picks stroll and the color is sapphire heather um i feel like the yarn is going to be really hard wearing um just like based on the feel of it so i hope that that is true and i do like the pattern a lot um it's like a i think it the lace is feather and fan i was going to look that up before the podcast but i didn't um i think that that's what it is just, I don't know if you can even see it at all, <laughs> but yeah, it's like night. It was a fun project. Um, obviously I'm still working on it. I just cast on for the cuff yesterday. So just gonna keep plugging away. Um, I think there'll be nice socks to have even though I'm a little disappointed in my color choice. Oh, well, you live and you learn. I don't do a lot of knit lace knitting, so now I know. Choose light colors. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is another thing. And I guess um, I don't I don't really have progress on this guy. This is my um pressed flowers cardigan and I was like I know my last podcast I shared I was just like booking on it like really going fast and like wanting to pick up this knit all the time and I have fully stalled I think it's because I just 
I talked about this last time, but I do want it to be a cardigan and I don't have enough of the, um, of the main color yarn. Um, it just had like a completely wrong yardage estimate essentially. Uh, and I think all I'll have is, um, enough to make it a vest. Um, and so I've just kind of been like stuck in between ripping it out and starting again with a similar contrast or main yarn, but not uh, one that like having enough of it or trying to find a yarn that's close enough to match. Or I even reached out to someone on Ravelry who had the same yarn in the same colorway it's discontinued so that's like the only way i'm going to be able to get it <laughs> is from someone's stash but they didn't have it listed as like for sale but i reached out anyways just to see if they'd consider selling it to me but i i think i found someone um just on facebook marketplace who might have a yarn that it's like a Rowan tweed decay. And from the pictures, it looks like it might be a pretty good match that I could like fudge it a little bit. I know it might end up looking like a lot worse or just more noticeable if it's not really a close enough match, but I don't know. I'm going to take a look at the yarn and, and see. It, I mean, it's it looks really similar, but we'll see. And then I, I can also kind of like color manage it and like start alternating between that one and the one that I've been using. Let's see if that helps at all. I don't know. Anyways, completely stalled. <laughs> I like I would love to keep working on it. Um, but if I do end up ripping it out, like I'll regret continuing to work on it, even though I love the pattern and the experience of knitting it. Okay. Uh, I also have my petite knit Sophie scarf, um, which is my like car knitting and it's in the car. We haven't taken a lot of trips, so I don't have a ton of progress on it. It's a Sophie scarf. It, it looks like a Sophie scarf. <laughs> Um, I'll show it when it's has more progress or when I'm finished. If you're still with me, that's awesome. Thanks. Uh, and I hope that uh, you enjoyed me rambling on about my knitting and also my sewing. Um, and that you're working on something fun. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.